uh-huh. is one of the funniest people ever. So your your new book, your new Audible book is entitled Five Minutes Five Minutes, five minutes to Kill, How the HBO Young Comedian Special Changed the Lives of 1989's Funniest Comics. It's available right now on Audible. Only Go buy it. And for how much? It's only two ninety nine. I think that's a and good you deal. Can, can you buy it at fredstoller.net? I don't think so. I got this guy in Canada who did my website and I can't get a hold of him. I have to bug him. I, if anyone out there knows how to take over a website, man, reach out to me. That was a well, headache. So whoever, somebody, whoever. Get it audible or Amazon. My, my website has been shut down. We're going into the third day. So really, why? Because I, I like to think it's because of what I say, but I'm pretty sure it's just because it's incompetence. Yes, it's uh, uh, yeah. So but yeah, Amazon or Audible, you can you can get it. And as they say, it's a labor love. I'm not I just want I like it's very rewarding. These little stories, you know, I didn't go the sitcom writing route either. You know, if you read uh, my Seinfeld year, but once in a while, when I get a residual check for like the two Seinfelds I wrote or the book, even though they're not big, it's so much more rewarding than a residual check for acting. I don't know why, like something you wrote, but I chose not to go the. You, you're the one who said, or no, someone else said that. You know, when you write on uh, a sitcom, unless you create it, you're writing in someone else's voice. And 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 I'm not good at other people's voices. So that sitcom writing route was how about fake how about just fake laughing at the boss's jokes? That's also good at yes, exactly. Sitcom. Every run through, every rehearsal, you've got to fake laugh at your jokes or they'll get cut. Yes. Did you write on any sitcoms, David? Yes. Oh, which one? Well, I created one. And I got a resi- I, I, I re, uh, just got a residual for 64 cents the other but day. What was the sitcom you created? I, uh, yeah, like Robert, that. yeah, I wish. Robert and I created a uh, sitcom for uh, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. Oh, I loved, um, uh, just because Dave Cyrus, great guy, I met him through your show, uh, posted, I was aware of that. Uh, the one with uh, Cuomo and everything. I don't know if you wrote on that. Well, that was the that was that was that was the um, the puppet Puppets show. Right on, like the Stephen A. Smith one thing was amazing. Uh, yeah. With him at the funeral. Uh, no, no, yeah, Max Kellerman. All that stuff was great. Yeah. I'm a big but, Trump uh, fan. Nobody funnier. Nobody I was funnier. I did like um, when Triumph. Like did some insult, like this, you're as big as Fred Stoller's brother. I don't know. I don't have a brother, but just that <laughs> I was a reference of some loser is like such an obscure, like a Geechee guy reference was once on. Geechee guy. I saw him, I saw him at Norm McDonald's memorial, and he goes, Fred, we used to be really skinny. Now we look normal finally. And that was great. Geechee guy was saying how well, we both look. Well, uh you, Alex, and Norm McDonald, there was a period when the three of you were very it was close. Insane because first we, Norm hosted something, that thing at, you know, Gotham, and Alex was there, and he was so excited to meet Norm, and Norm was going on some tangent that I eat shit out of toilets, and Alex wanted to, like, get in good with Norm, because, yeah, I heard that too, you know, like, was like, so... And thrill. So Norm talked Alex into driving five hours in the rain to Foxwoods to video to do some podcast. We were trying to do that made no sense. And um, and then it was really uh, I shouldn't say bad of the of the Norm, the dead. But Norm, I said, don't bring him. He's going to have to drive home. And I know it, it had ended up where Alex had to sleep on the floor in my room because he, he couldn't drive home. And, and at that time, at, at, for 30 years, like I'm too old 
to be sharing a room with an excitable 26 year old, like, Hey, who's your favorite influence is all night long asking, well, hey, what do you think about Alan King versus that? Cause Alex was, uh, you know, a new, you know, a guy that knew references. Hey, would you think the ref, the, the uh, Mr. Show versus, uh, I, I don't want to talk about this. And all night long, he's asking about my influences and what I don't remember. And I go, and I was just so mad that Norm, that I had to share a room with Alex. Anyone at my age, when you're sharing a room, any, and what, 25 years but he ago. Loved, but Alex, he was so excited. He, loved, he could, I, he would call me every hour. Norm, it's amazing. This is incredible. With Norm McDonald. I'm with, you, you, yeah, it was you, incredible. And he was on my floor. And I and then then Norm says to him in the morning, he goes, I heard you were peeing so much. You were disturbing Alex. Like, wow, oh, look, that's why I want my own room at my age, so I can pee and get up as much as I want without the 26-year-old judging me. You know, I don't need to be judged by the peeing. The middle-aged peeing neuroticness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Alex didn't like it. Why didn't you buy him a room? You know, you made him stay right. there. And then in the morning, I, I, you know, so Alex is having breakfast, Norm, and I, I just I, I go come down for breakfast, and I go, I need a break from Alex. He's a good guy, love him, but I just <laughs> I just didn't want to be the excitable. I'm with Norm McDonald. He was a little excited about me. I don't want to brag. You know, I'm not modest guy, but it was like it was like. Wow, and with a mic, and uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, oh my god, you know, because Alex, I don't know if the people know, I'm sure they know, he's you know, a, a young guy, but he was younger at the time, but like a comedy aficionado because his uncle taught him about you know, whatever Milton Berle, and he was a comedy <laughs> encyclopedia. So, Norm Macdonald, it was like you know, being with Sinatra to him, and uh, right, it, it was so exciting, and then. I, I got sad thinking, you know, me and Norm, well, Norm's dead. I'm going to be long dead. And Alex will be older telling people, when I first started, I was with these, this legend and this other kind of known guy. And it was so exciting. Repeat a lot. Yeah, he'll, he'll tell those stories. So, yes, that was What's my your long favorite time. with Norm? Because you were pretty close to Norm. Well, with you were Norm, open. I toured with him for 11 months. And that was, it, it got weird because Norm couldn't uh, drive. He couldn't do Uber. He couldn't, he, he'd forget to pack his pants and I'd have to find him <laughs> pants. He'd just have sweatpants or shorts he wore on the flight. So it got to be a little much because I'd say to him, and, and Alex was there, he'd get abusive. You fuck this up. You should have comped these people. Norm, I don't need this Bob Bowie shit, I would say, but, <laughs> but there were so many laughs. So you know, the times uh, me, I was on his show. He had a podcast, a, pod, a sitcom, Norm show. And me, him mm -hmm. and Artie Lang, he would sneak off to play tennis because he had to beat Artie Lang in tennis and they couldn't find him. They were doing a taping, but Norm cared more about beating Artie Lang in tennis and me. And uh, so those tennis matches, I'd laugh my ass off. I would throw rackets and they'd be screaming and and just just the laughs of, uh, you know. So the whole world, it was on ABC. The whole world is spinning out of control on a sitcom. And Norm and decides. Norm, I said, Norm, we're getting sweated up. We were supposed to shoot a show. And here I am. He grabbed me with, grabbed me like, you got to play tennis too, Freddie. And, and it's like, Norm, we're getting sweated up. We're about to shoot your show because I don't give a shit. But he did it at first. But then he he just he loved tennis or games and, you know, as you know, some gambling. So uh, when I opened for him, though, he was really he got he wasn't gambling as much. He was more into he realized after a while that, um, you know, he's tried pilots. He tried this that uh, sitcom was his strength. And he was very proud of his book. One of my other favorite stories was I had to um, hang out with him because uh, part of opening for him is 
you had to hang out with him, like watch the, uh, you know, uh, 2015 uh, presidential debates. I remember Norm laughing because Trump would say, you know, on Twitter. And at the time, Norm thought it was funny. Trump was referencing Twitter because you know, Norm just thought as this frivolous thing, you know, uh, you know what, you know, whatever. Blaine Kapatch makes snarky jokes on. He didn't, but he didn't realize the power of Twitter. So he would laugh when they'd reference Twitter, like referencing MySpace. But um, so I had to hang out with him and also be backstage with him when Norm did the Tonight Show the same night uh, Trump was there. Uh, when really, uh, when when uh, Jimmy Fallon tussled his hair. And I remember you were there? I, was, I was I don't want to brag, but I was with Ross A. Brash, who would write for Norm. So uh, and Ross A. Brash, I hung out with the very inside thing was at Norm's Memorial. So we had to. So all these secrets, uh, uh, Secret Service were there. And I remember I needed the bathroom and Trump is right there with his son and keep moving, keep moving. And uh yeah, so I remember watching, and I it was an unsettling feeling. Like he comes out, and 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 and, he, and he's treating him like this. Goof. It's sort of like when Mel Gibson um, did his first Tonight Show after all that sugar tits, you know, stuff, you know. Um, right. And then Jay, like, yeah, what do you, do you like to? Uh, what's your favorite <laughs> golf club? You know, you know, not you know, like uh, he's a regular guy. Yeah. Like, at least Lena, when you Grant was on, go. What were you thinking with the process? I was like, hey, Mel, what do you think? It's fun when you fish. You know, I, you know what I'm saying. Like he's a piece of crap, Mel Gibson. But like Mel, Mel, you know, not really acknowledging it and they're laughing. So I remember having that unsettling feeling, and and Norm. Me, Ross, and Norm. Ross, for the people who don't know, uh, you know, is a uh, writer. He wrote a lot of update stuff and I guess wrote the segment. Norm did. Standing there, Trump is there. And uh, Norm goes, Mr. Trump, get a, could I get a, uh, you know, I can't do impressions, as you'll hear if you listen to my audio book. Can I get a picture with you? And Norm never wanted pictures with anyone. He wasn't like a selfie guy. Oh, Brian Cranston. And uh, and Trump goes, five minutes. So then Trump goes in, inside and Norm's excited. He's going to get a selfie. And then Trump is gone. Oh. So he lied even about a selfie with right. Trump. So that is the right. most egregious thing. That Right. You know, but yes. Yeah. So yes, there was a lot of adventure. You know, me and Norm... Uh, Traveling around. I think there's another book. Trapped what? Tra traveling around. It, yeah, maybe I'll call it my norm a, year, like my Seinfeld year. Um, that would be, you know, you should call it. I got another lawsuit. I know Alex's family is very rich with lawyers. So uh, no, I'm just kidding. You, you No, but you should talk to Alex and do, do your my norm year. I would love because I was kind of privy to it just through Alex and you. I remember you finally called, you know, three in the morning, like for your, and, and, and I was so done with the not And Norm was just, he was going on the shitting still, the uh, Fred shits or eat shit out of the toilet. I mean, it was just, just that bit. He would just take a bit and go with it and go with it. Do you remember that? I remember I, I, listen, I have two regrets. One is I passed on AOC. She was running for office. Wow. And Howie Klein said, do you want to have this, this candidate on? Her name is AOC. Why did you pass? I, and you have I'm an McAnemi on and you passed. I know. I, <laughs> yeah, here's, that's, that to you is the best find. No, and 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 so I said, I you know what uh, I I, wa I want uh, somebody who, you know I, I want to have a serious candidate on. I didn't know there was no way she was going to beat. Uh, I forgot you know what the I name. What I have a quasi regret about. Um, I don't know if you remember. I used to do these jokes. I'm a thrill seeker. I live on the edge. I drank milk at Expar yesterday. You know, thrill seeker right, persona, right. and which, by the way, all these rebel people like Ari Shafir. They're almost doing my bit, but they're taking themselves seriously. I said that. I don't care. I'm a PC. But I'd be in on the joke that I'm a schmuck. But they really think they're so brazen. But Sam Kennison uh, really got a kick out of that thing. You know, he loved it, you know, because this guy's a rebel like me. I can't do the impression. So Kennison right. 
had this thing called the, the Rebels of Comedy or some tour where people like, many of them are dead, Mitch Walters, uh, Carl LeBeau, these guys that Sam Kennison and the Outlaws. So mm -hmm. he thought it'd be fun in Vegas for a month that I'm one of the outlaws, you know, because I'm the thrill seeker. But I, I thought it would be a great story and amazing to travel with the outlaws. But I thought a month in Vegas, you know, I was trying to audition, get on TV. I, I think after four days, it would have got old, you know, you know, you turned <laughs> it down. I turned it down. Yes. Right. I kind of yeah. sometimes regret it. Like, uh, yeah, maybe a weekend with the outlaws or a week, but a month. Yeah. I would have been a great, amazing story, but yes, in hindsight, if that's another to... book, what would have made an amazing story? All the... I should, you should write a fictional version of uh, when I taught with the outlaws, even though it never happened. What well, um, would have made kind of like Norm's book? Well, my and my other regret is that I get a call at three in the morning. Norm wants finally. I've been trying to get him on my podcast for years. And it's three in the morning and he wants to do the show. And I went, I don't know, I can't get it up at three in the morning. Well, at the memorial, uh, David Spade was saying how uh, he, uh, you'd never, you, a Norma ghost you and all of a sudden text you three more, where, where, where are you? Come on, what the F, you know, and come on. Hello, hello, hello. You know, and all of a sudden like you're the flaky one. So yes, right. on on his time, the memorial was um, was pretty amazing. Conan hosted it, and uh, he, you know, and luckily no one made it about them too much. But uh, Rob Schneider did a video bit, like you know, I'm, I, like he was in some Winnebago, and I can't make it, and he's telling some stories, and then he says. Uh, and then at the end, he, you know, he says, you know, I'm directing the movie. That's why I can't make it. And then uh, Conan comes out. He goes, doesn't he look like he's a fugitive from the law? He looks like he's in an undisclosed location. You know, Conan was was very quick. And uh, Jim Downey spoke. Um, well, oh, oh, it, w it would have been funnier if Schneider then walked out on like that. Yes, I thought thing. like a yes, like a green screen, like he was directing a yeah. movie. And we have was, we have to wrap it up. Okay. Hey. Uh, Come back and talk about Gilbert. Wow, that 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 would be uh, yes. Let me any time, as they say. We we have to wrap it up. Um, I've been going on YouTube uh, and watching him. Yes, yeah, same thing with Norm when they died. Everyone. I, I too, too, with Gilbert, like when YouTube clips when he's on Artie's show, that the, them laughing, Gilbert. Yes, there's a rabbit hole, as they say, of so many uh, podcast appearances of Gilbert. May, him and Joy Behar. Jay, Jay, Joy Behar had a short-lived uh, show, and it, and it was canceled. And Norm, and Norm Gilbert, threw in, this is the last time I'm on your show. The joke was because it was canceled. And, you know, and... Uh, Yes, there's some great. We have to wrap it up to my listeners. If you want a, a treat, just go down a rabbit hole uh, on Twitter, a uh, Twitter on YouTube of Gilbert, but try to find him doing local television. That's where he's at his funniest when he, when he's just like it's six, in the, seven in the morning no. and he's doing like AM Fresno. You know, oh, can I just say so one last funny. thing? I know you got to wrap it up. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that guy, Ant from Opie and Anthony. Um, he was on because just, you know, it's a little, you know, um, extreme yeah. the other way. But they yeah. were talking about not politics, all the old TV shows and crazy Guggenheimer and I, I I loved it. I, I respect to that guy Ant a little bit more because they had a reverence for like old TV and it was so entertaining. Yeah. yeah. My little what what little I know about Anthony Kumia is he is a brilliantly funny guy and his racism, and it, he is a racist. Uh and uh, he's self-destructive 
as brilliant people so often are. And he's allowed his racism to consume him and destroy uh, his comedy. You know, it's a lot of that racism, racism, bigotry is a mental illness. It really is. Hey, come back. It's good to I see you. To. This was fun. Yeah, it's I really good. To adjust too many things. Usually it's stressful. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Sat here with my cat. All right. Uh, let's plug your uh, book. Five Check minutes. To out. Kill. It's only two ninety nine. Uh, five minutes to kill the audio book of uh, the book. Trust me, I've read this book. The only thing better than reading it is listening to Fred Stoller narrating it on audio. I do a great John Ross impression, I was told. I don't want to brag. No, it's an inside joke. No, I had to do, you know, quote people in different voices. So they all sound the same. I in it? Yes. You want to hear your quote? Well, next time. Okay. But did you imitate me? I think I think they all sounded the same, like Drake, Dennis Miller, Rob Schneider. Nah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if I got your voice. You know, it's just general, but it was a great, great quote from you. I used in it that I got Thank you. Me. Yes, but we'll, I guess we'll leave it a surprise. Will you come back next week? Okay. Fred Stoller. Thank you, Fred Stoller. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'd like to come back, as they said. Good. We love right, you and your sign up. One of the original gang. One of the original gangsters of the David Feldman show.